the five gospels is a 550 page book containing translations of the gospels of matthew mark luke and john 550 pages of four people who we don't know what their last names were matthew who mark who luke who and john who secondly 82 percent of those 550 pages 82 percent they are not the words of jesus christ at all Khalid didn't say that. Christian scholars of 364 denominations, they said that 82% of the 550 pages of the Gospels, they are not the words of Jesus Christ at all. And the way they have determined that and showed that to you and I is that in the New Testament, they have done something called the Red Letter Bible. How many of you have seen the Red Letter Bibles? Be honest. Those are the Bibles where whatever Jesus said himself is in red letters. How many of you have seen that Bible? Yes. And you will find for yourself that only 20% of what is in the New Testament is written in red. That's allegedly what Jesus Christ said. Biblical scholars and theologians alike have learned to distinguish the Jesus of history from the Christ of faith. It has been a painful lesson for both the church and scholarship. The distinction between the two figures is the difference between a historical person who lived in a particular time and place and a figure who has been assigned a mythical role in which he descends from heaven to rescue humankind and, of course, eventually returns back to heaven. We want to continue to review the words of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ said, and this is the life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, 3. that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. And Jesus Christ said in John 20, 17, to a woman, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. So by Jesus Christ's words, He's a prophet of Nazareth. He's a prophet of God. He's a man that eats and drinks. He's a man sent by God. He is the son of man. Man meaning human. He's the son of a woman, Mary, who was pure and untouched, chosen by God to have a son through phenomenal birth. Now we want to examine a totally different view of Jesus as taught and represented by St. Paul, the father of, modern, of the modern church. In doing so, we will talk about the New Covenant, the New Testament, and what has inevitably become a new religion built around a new Christ and a new Jesus. Now let's make reference to Paul himself. By his own admission, Paul said that I was on my way traveling 
on the road to Damascus. That's what Paul said. Now, when he was on that road traveling to Damascus, what was he doing? Paul said, I was on a mission to capture or to kill or trap Christians because Paul, or at that time his name was Saul of Tarsus. Saul was a bounty hunter. And what was his hunt? What was his prey? It was Christians. Paul used to trap them, bind them, hold them, arrest them, and deliver them to the Romans to be jailed and killed for a price. Now, on one of those excursions, Paul said that he was on the road to Damascus, and he was riding on a horse along with some other people. And he said he heard a voice, but the other people didn't hear it. He said he saw a light, but the others didn't see it. And he fell off his horse, but the others didn't fall off their horse. And Paul said that in a vision, he saw Jesus Christ, and Christ revealed to him, Paul, Paul, why do you persecute the church? Paul, I have selected you to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Now that is the only time that Paul said he saw and talked to Christ. But those that was with him, they didn't see Christ. They didn't see the light, and they didn't hear the voice, and they didn't fall off their horses. But at best, Paul saw something. We cannot deny that Paul saw something. But isn't it strange that after that one vision, Paul straight away understood that he was now the 12th apostle of Jesus Christ to replace Judas, a good replacement. Judas, of course, had already betrayed. Jesus Christ had already been lifted. Now there were only 11 disciples, genuine disciples, and Paul said he had been appointed to fill that gap. He now became the 12th apostle by his own appointment. And isn't it strange that of the 27 books of the New Testament, that 15 of those books are absolutely written by Paul himself? 15 books. And the church fathers are of the opinion that the first five books were also written by Paul or under the influence of Paul. Why is that? Because Paul wrote his books between 50 and 60 years after Jesus Christ left. The other books, the four Gospels and Acts, they were written between 90 and 110 years after. Therefore, whoever wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, they were influenced by Paul, who wrote first. Now, most Christians don't know that. Now, if you got the majority of the books written by Paul, who never saw Jesus physically, in one vision, and you got another five books of four gospel writers who also never saw Jesus, never ate with Jesus, never talked to Jesus, never sat with Jesus, never heard directly from Jesus, then you got at least 20 books of human beings who had no direct connection with Jesus Christ. And mind you, all of these books were written without the authorization 
without the assistance, without the witnessing, without the documentation, without the collaboration of the other 12 apostles who were living. Where were they living? In Antioch or Jerusalem or Galilee? One would ask, why didn't those 11 write? And why were they passed up? And why were they not collaborated with?